standard. Just so you know, Anna, I just checked the numbers on YouTube. So even though we're not getting a lot, not a lot of people live at four o'clock on Wednesday, we have between 25 and 30 actually opening up the link and watching it. So. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I, um, I don't mind getting started. Um, so uh, yeah, I guess like a, a few things to talk about this week. Um, numbers are continuing to drop. Um, I, I wasn't sure, like, I, I generally sort of spend a bit of time every morning kind of scrolling through the, um, the coronavirus update page on the, um, on the provincial um, website. And I don't know if it would be helpful to just kind of like look at that quickly and get a sense of like what I look at and what, what the, like, I don't mind, I've, I've never shared my screen before with a Zoom call, but I can try and see what happens. All right, um, and I can just kind of go through um, what I'm looking at and what I find interesting in terms of those numbers and those stats and maybe kind of some of the things that that will sort of, yeah, that will probably sort of guide things over the next little bit. So I can try that for a couple minutes. I haven't tried that before, so let's try that. Um, okay, is that how that works? Yeah. Oh, cool. All right, so here we go. Okay, so um, when you first go into the provincial um, website in terms of uh, the data, the first thing that you see is sort of the, the overview of the cases. So what they do is they report the number of COVID cases that came in over the previous 24 hours. And this time it was, um, you know, 1,095 new cases um, from yesterday to today, which is actually continuing that downward trend um, overall of, of dropping numbers of cases. Um, and there was a little bit of concern kind of earlier in the week on Monday and Tuesday that maybe there wasn't quite as much testing being done um, and but the percentage positive rate was just above five percent again today so it's not it, it they think it at as long as it's sort of around or under five percent you're maybe not missing um, a lot of cases so that's a, a really reassuring sign um, the map just kind of shows you where the highest concentration of cases so the greatest number per hundred thousand um, uh, and uh, every day a different region kind of lights up a little bit. Some of that is just with the reporting. So like Durham, which is this region here, went from like 23 to like 120 cases from one day to the next, but that's usually a reporting delay. So I don't spend a lot of time there. Um, I do find it interesting to kind of compare the, um, the public health units though, in terms of looking at kind of the public health units that are kind of close to us to see what is going on in those places. So I might pick Hamilton, Halton and Peel, for example, and then you can see what the numbers in those regions have looked like over the last month or so. Um, so again, that kind of steady decline in reported new cases of COVID in each of those public health units, you know, to the point where, you know, Halton uh, yesterday reported 27 new cases or from yesterday to today and Hamilton only reported 54. Um, and then this is always, this has been the most heartening uh, graph for me over the last little bit. So if we kind of look at the last 90 days, we can see what the trend of this wave um, has been, where we had those sort of, you know, just about a thousand new cases in February and things started to open up. And then we saw this dramatic decline, uh, rise in cases where we got very close to 5,000 new cases per day on April the 16th. Um, April 9th is when the province uh, locked down again. And then we've seen that steady decline ever since. Number of deaths has generally stayed pretty constant um, over the last 90 days, um, with a bit of a peak um, kind of shortly after that, um, that, that sort of big new number of, of cases in April. But over the last little bit, it's been, it's been fairly consistent. Um, and then the, the R number. So we've talked about that a little bit before. So the R number represents how many new cases of COVID each person is likely to cause. Um, and as long as that is under one, you continue to see dropping numbers, okay? So that's kind of my scroll through in terms of the data. And then the other thing that I look at when I'm here is the hospitalization information. So see if I can get that up. It's thinking for a second. So again, this is province-wide. This isn't, this isn't just Halton, but, um, but this is kind of province-wide in terms of hospitalizations. Um, going back to all the cases. 
Okay. So, you know, the number of people in hospital um, is declining, um, but there are still new cases being admitted to hospital every day. And that makes sense because a percentage of people who um, do develop COVID will require hospital care. Um, overall, the trend is downward, so fewer people in ICU compared to last week, uh, fewer people on ventilators overall compared to last week. Um, but overall, although the active number of cases is dropping, the number of hospital cases is, is slowly dropping, uh, it's not dropping as quickly as the active cases because there are still going to be people who need hospital care. Um, and same thing with the number of cases in the ICU. So de slow declining number of people in hospital, but not as much of a decline um, in terms of people in ICU. It's better, it really is, but that number is always going to lag behind the drop in the cases in the community. Um, just the sheer number of people that still have active infection, eventually a percentage of them is going are going to require hospital care. So those can are, I, sorry. Can I ask you a quick question? Yeah, Do you find in the hospitals or particularly in Halton or OTMH, that more young people are in the hospital than what there were before and more are in ICU than what were there before? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Um, the, the trend definitely of the population of admitted to hospital and in, in intensive care units has trended downwards. Um, and I think a lot of that is because of the, um, the early and aggressive um, immunization of older adults, especially people yeah. in long term care. And so I really do think that we saw the, the success of that immunization campaign and the number of, of, um, of in how few people in that demographic were admitted to hospital. There were still some, but um, certainly even anecdotally, what I'm hearing from colleagues is who they're, they're seeing people who are younger, unimmunized in hospital. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's the numbers. Uh, and I always find it's interesting to kind of look at the country as a whole. So that's kind of Canada's daily new cases. Um, following the trend for Ontario quite nicely. Um, and then even globally, although there are lots of places in the world where there are um, COVID cases that are going up, the overall trend is that we are seeing the, the other side of this third wave. So that's good. All right, um, other things that have sort of, here, I will unshare my screen now. Um, other things that have come up this week, um, one is the provincial reopening plan. And so, um, you know, the province has said that there's still this sort of, you know, stay at home order in place until June the 2nd, but they're talking about a phased reopening um, starting on, on June the 13th um, with an emphasis on outdoor gatherings of up to 10 people, outdoor dining at restaurants, um, you know, non-essential retail being opened back up again. Um, so those are those are some of the, 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 the um, plan that plan, the, the pieces that are part of plan one. Uh, it's interesting to me though, they've said that what they want to see is 60% immunization before they uh, move on to that plan. But we're, we're actually pretty much there. We're actually pretty much at 60% immunization for most of the health regions across the country. So I don't know if they're going to accelerate that plan before June the 13th, but. Can I ask you a quick question? Sure. Yeah. Um, I was looking at the Halton site today and I noticed that May 22nd, they opened it up to five people outdoors, as long as you stay at a distance and as long as, so some of them have opened up. Yep. So they've, that, that was a subtle change um, that kind of happened last week in terms of, uh, of allowing gatherings of up to, that's my understanding of up to five people outside, as long as social distancing and, and, you know, yeah. All of those regulations are still um, are still followed. The other thing that opened up over the weekend was sort of outdoor recreation, right? Golf courses, baseball diamonds, tennis courts, those kinds of things, so people can go and as long as as physical distancing um, requirements are are met, they can do those outdoor activities as well. Which again was a little bit of a, a light on the horizon. Um, Halton is at sixty two percent of eligible adults being immunized, and so that that is um, that is something to celebrate and. You know, if that's the metric that the province is going for, and we start to see cases under a thousand per day, then um, you know I'm really optimistic that that you know this this reopening plan will start to take shape. Um, I guess there was a little bit of confusion this week. Um, the province announced that um, 
youth age 12 to 17 would be eligible to book vaccines. Um, but Halton region was not quite ready uh, for that because their, um, their, their immunization appointments are booked all the way up to the end of May. Um, and currently they, they have supply for that and they know um, that they'll have supply for that. So they were not quite ready to open up immunization for um, children between the ages of 12 and 17. Um, my understanding from the region is they will open up that immunization on the 31st of May where people can um, start to sign up um, children aged 12 to 17 uh, for immunizations in Halton during that time. There are other regions where you can um, be immunized, uh, but I just as a, as a bit of a, um, as a trial, I went on to the provincial website and I put in my address in Burlington and Lyndon's birth year, which is 2005. And the message that I got back from the site was that, that she was not yet eligible to book a vaccine. So in Halton, it will be um, until, you know, probably won't be until May 31st. Um, if that changes, you know, I'll, I'll let people know, but May 31st to, um, to book immunizations for kids age 12 to 17, with the goal of having the second shot for that age group um, by the end of August before they go back to school. So that's also really exciting. Um, another piece is um, the AstraZeneca vaccine. So the province is sitting on a supply of AstraZeneca vaccine, which is going to expire at the end of May. And so they've opened up vaccination for the group of people who were immunized um, in the very first um, group of AstraZeneca vaccines. So that's people who were immunized between um, the 10th and the 19th of March. So it's been about 10 weeks for those people. Um, they do not want those doses to go to waste. And so they're encouraging people who did get the AstraZeneca vaccine in that first um, 10 days to reach out to the pharmacy where they had their first dose given um, to try to book um, a second dose to be given in the next few days, honestly. So if anybody knows um, people who are wondering what that process is, is supposed to look like, it's, it is through the pharmacies that that's being booked. We also have 300,000 other AstraZeneca vaccines, and I don't know uh, what the plan is yet for those. Um, that hasn't yet been communicated to us, but I'll certainly uh, do my best to keep on top of that and let people know what's gonna happen there. Um, I guess anything else going on in the world of COVID? Um, not much. I, I think that, you know, there's lots to be optimistic about still. Um, we'll see over the next couple of weeks if there's an uptick in cases after the May long weekend. Um, it's kind of hard to hard to say at this point with immunization numbers being as high as they, they are. And I think um, a lot of people, you know, following the, the recommendations from the province, um, we'll see what happens there. Um, but again, that would be a really optimistic sign as well if we were able to kind of get through the next couple of weeks without a, an uptick after after the May long weekend. And uh, yeah, so lots of lots of hope on the horizon still. So have you heard anything? And I know this doesn't apply to you or to Deborah, but uh, as far as those of us that are older, getting our second shots earlier than say July. Yeah, which is when um, we're supposed to get them. Have you heard anything as far as the moving it ahead in Halton to June? Yeah, no details yet. Um, you know, they they accelerated the second dose for some populations. So um, mm -hmm. you know, people that are at very high risk, people with cancers that are on active treatment, um, people with, with blood based cancers, um, you know, people that are high risk healthcare workers. Um, in, in the sort of front lines of, of the uh, of, of the COVID sort of battle, as it were, um, and and so they're getting accelerated second doses now. We'll see with the supply over the next couple of weeks if that's going to be accelerated for other people as well. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And I have a question around when 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 we say that sixty percent have been vaccinated. Is that sixty percent? of the entire population or 60% no. of those who are eligible to be vaccinated? 60% of eligible, 62% of eligible adults in Halton have had at least one dose. Okay, so does it include, that doesn't include 12 to 17 year olds either then? No. no. Just adults. Just the adults, yes. So that's, um, that's, that's COVID this week. <laughs> 
Um, so yeah, no, that's, I'm glad people are listening on, on YouTube and, um, certainly, um, if people want to email me or contact me, uh, via messenger on Facebook with questions, concerns, that sort of thing, then, uh, I'm more than happy to, to address those. Um, at a, a question about school reopening, um, there's no sort of clear, um, guidance on that quite yet. Um, David Williams, who is the chief medical officer for the province, um, would really like to see schools reopened before the end of the year that was in the news today but there was no sort of specific plan or or guidance attached to that so that'll be something to watch over the next next week or so oh now they did say today on tv on cnn that although he wants schools to open he's going to leave it not up to parliament but up to the individual uh, areas. So it would cover under Halton, say, for instance. And they were going to announce later on this afternoon whether or not uh, the schools would open in each area yeah. and what areas will open. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and there, I, the logic behind that is, you know, certain places are, are much harder hit with COVID than others, right? And, oh, yeah. so, you know, they're, they're trying perhaps a one size fits all approach to that. But um, yeah, we'll have to see as uh, as that uh, as that news unfolds. Okay, great. Okay. Thanks, Anna. Have a good day. Thanks, loads. Thank you. Bye bye now. Bye.